Hello guys, Pastor Preston is my name. So, as a Christian, you must be a Bible student. Otherwise, people are going to use the Bible and mess you up. Acts chapter number 17, verse number 11, right? It speaks about the Berean Christian who in investigated the things that Paul taught them if they were so. If you're not in that character of doing so, you most likely will believe some wrong stuff, right? And be thinking is the right stuff. And something that is very dangerous about that is the fact that if you believe in a thing, it begins to work for you, not necessarily because it's right or wrong. Okay, so make sure that you learn to investigate things before you believe them. So, for example, I want to talk to you about altar. Okay, so we have this perspective about altar. You hear people say evil altar. You hear people say good altar. Some people say build an altar in your house. Some people say let us come and destroy this altar. All right, some people even say let us come and sew upon the altar. And you have not taken out time to check the word altar. You can put on Google, right, or check through your concordance and all that stuff and read and learn about the word altar. Okay, altar was mentioned first from Noah. Okay, right, he built an altar for which they, you know, sacrificed unto the Lord. And of course, if you read Hebrews chapter number five, verse number one, he says, every high priest is taken from among men. That's why God had to come in flesh in Jesus, right? So it could be an high priest for us. Okay, and all the other high priests were taken from among men. And he stated something. He says that they may offer gift and sacrifice unto the Lord. That they may offer gift and sacrifice unto the Lord. Hold that thought in Hebrews 5, right? And then come into the temple. Now, the temple had three courts. You had the holies of holies, you had the holy, and then you had the outer court. That's how the temple was fashioned, right? Only the high priest moves into the holies of holies. Other priest stays in the holies, and then a couple of other people stays in the outer court. And this is a function of sanctification, how sanctified that they are, right? And then, of course, the temple, the outer court, the presented, presents their gift, then the, the, the priest will take it. Depends on the kind of sacrifice, right? If it's an atonement, it will go into the holy of holies. And then if it's maybe no more other gifts or sacrifice, right, it will be done in the holies, right? And in that holy court, right, it podium or a platform is raised and that platform is called an altar right it is used to sacrifice animals or whatever it is unto the lord that's what they use uh, that altar to do so they use it to come and you know atone or right for a sin or a crime or some stuff right that's what they do with that kind of altar do we still have evil altars today yes of course right a lot of uh wicked people still have all that but there's something i want you to understand jesus said something very profound he says i'll bring down this temple and i'll build again after three days right and of course we understand that the bible says that has now been built in our body scripture says your body is the temple of god and the spirit of god dwells therein so the spirit of god dwells in us so if the spirit of god dwells in us that means the altar will now be in us so remember a very profound scriptures that will come to your mind which will be romans chapter number 12 verse number one it says i beg you my brothers and sisters present your body a living sacrifice a living sacrifice holy and acceptable which is your reasonable service unto the lord so it tells us that man has become an altar to the lord because we are now a living sacrifice we are right unto the lord now in the old testament pattern of waters man will bring their sacrifice and we will slaughter it unto the lord in the new testament pattern right god we offer us so we can offer to man so it's god bringing his sacrifice bringing his word that we offer to men as against we bringing sacrifice to offer for our wrong Okay, that's what's now working in the New Testament because we have become an altar unto the Lord. So be careful how people want to mess you up and tell you things about altar, this and that and that, 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 right? The Bible talked about our, our heart, okay, right? Where for which the word of God is sown. And then of course our spirit, of course our mind, and then of course ourself, all that falls within the compartment of altar. So if you don't know your Bible correctly, you allow men to fool you. Now go read in the episodes, right? Or what you call the New Testament, what you call, right? You realize that there were not any practice of altar that we are beginning to practice today. If you find anybody who want to practice the, the, the expressions of altar, at best, they will go to the Old Testament to extract scriptures and take them out of context, right? Not understanding for which they did that before. And then Jesus had shown up today, right? right? And then many of them are not supposed to be in operation anymore. Glory to God. So altar, right? It's not that 
podium, platforms where you're not putting your house. So we're coming to the altar to pray, right? Oh, let us come and pray in the altar and the rest of them. No, right? There are no altars anymore, right? Even where we preach from, it's in the real sense a podium. That's what it really is, okay? Right? It's an elevated podium, not really an altar. But Pastor Preston, the people who still go, they put an offering and pray that and they receive a blessing. For two reasons. Number one, maybe you have faith that it will be done. Number two, apparently because the preacher moves there, right, or stays there to dispense from, right, the anointing upon him could have rubbed on on that platform. However, he never stays there for forever. It just stays for a period of time, just the way you, they took apron from the, from the apostles and he healed the sick. But those aprons will not continue, right? So we must get out these things right, right? So we don't begin to mislead ourselves with scriptures, right? As against what the scriptures really said. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So altar is in us. It is a service that we render to God or a service that we render from God to the brethren, right? Not necessarily uh, building some stuff, right? And now begin to think, oh, it's until you connect with those places, God will not bless you or do some massive stuff in your life and the rest of them, right? It's not correct according to scriptures. I hope this brings you a lot of sense. And I like to go research it and study it properly, right? You need to know your rights in Christ, what's in the new creation for us in Christ, and then feature the as against wanting to do things that have been abolished or that have expired in Christ, right? And then you, you, you think you're doing an amazing thing, not understanding that you are doing something that is not scripturally sound according to the New Testament, okay? So we are God's altars because we take sacrifice for men. Now, I told you to hold that scripture, Hebrews chapter number five. Remember, the Bible talked to us and said, we are all now priests and kings, right? Good. That's why we can offer service for the Lord and from the Lord because we are now priests. And then the high priest is now Christ, who once and for all had become a perfect sacrifice for us all. So we don't need to do that kind for which they do to cover their wrong for a certain period of time. He had done it once and for all. So we don't need to continue to do that anymore as sins have been blotted out right forever. So we don't need to go through that old route for which we need an altar for which we present sacrifices now to cover for that. No, he had done it once and for all and then offer us forgiveness, offer us a right to stand, right, and become partners with him to offer services for the brethren. Glory to God. I hope you make a lot of sense, right? You can think about it, right? And then, of course, verify me if I'm right, right? So we can begin to set the brethren free from manipulative stuff for which people used to take advantage of them or maybe for those who are ignorant and just want to continue to do a thing that they lack proper understanding. But in a lot of the case, right, a couple of them are just a way to manipulate the brethren for which they could take from them and make them believe it kind of stuff, right? And then using ambiguous words that are not consistent with scriptures. Glory to God. I hope this blessed you. Thank you for listening and God bless you.